when i say pharmacokinetics we are talking about the drugs when i say pharmacodynamics we are talking about the body so the effect of the body on the drug is pharmacokinetics the effect of the drug on the body is known as pharmacodynamics so pharmacokinetics we have a rule that or the study which is known as ADME study that means it consists of four things absorption distribution metabolism and the excretion of the drug when we are talking about drugs so what happens to the drug drug get absorbed drug get distributed it get metabolized and finally it is excreted via urine or by the kidneys so first of all a dose is administered either by the oral route or im route the routes of administration we already talked about then the drug is concentrated in the systemic circulation so it is the bioavailability that is the percentage of the drug that reaches the systemic circulation it get distributed by the tissue so d is the distribution then the drug is metabolized and the first pass metabolism that happens in the kidney and e for excretion that is elimination of the drug then pharmacodynamics will be talking about the toxicity effectiveness of the drug and the graphs or the curve now coming to pharmacokinetics which is also known as ADME study absorption distribution metabolism and the excretion study the absorption we have bioavailability that is the percentage of the drug that reaches the system excirculation bioavailability is directly proportional to absorption because more the absorption more it reaches to the system excirculation and bioavailability is inversely proportional to first pass metabolism if the higher percentage is metabolized in the liver then there is less percentage of the molecule of that particular drug that reaches the systemic circulation so more the bioavailability less at the first pass metabolism if we give a drug by iv route then the bioavailability is 100% remember 100% bioavailability is for iv route next in the absorption we have plasma concentration time graph now this is a graph that is plotted between the plasma concentration and the time so y axis we have plasma concentration x axis x axis we have time and when this graph is plotted the highest uh, the point uh, that is present on the y axis is our on the plasma concentration when we talk about is the c max so c max it is a point that is the maximum plasma concentration is obtained when at this highest point when we take a point on the x axis that is in relation to time that is t max so this is a time that is required to reach the maximum plasma concentration basically this tells about the rate of the absorption and this particular area under the curve is the extent of the absorption so this is the extent of absorption so this is a plasma concentration time graph c max is the maximum plasma concentration that is obtained and t max is the time that is required to reach this maximum plasma concentration so this is the time that is required to reach the maximum concentration so it is the rate of the absorption and the extent of absorption is area under the curve distribution so distribution is when the drug is distributed in the tissues so amount of drug that is going to the tissues is the distribution in this we'll be talking about the volume of distribution loading dose so volume of distribution is the amount that is given by the iv route divided by the plasma concentration next is metabolism so metabolism is to make this drug water soluble we have two phases the phase one will attach the functional group to the drug so it will make the drug sticky so that the drug can continue to the phase two phase two will make it water soluble so the main principle or aim of metabolism is to make the drug water soluble so we have phase one which includes catabolic reaction and phase two which includes the conjugation reaction the molecules attached to the drug phase 1 and phase 2 are carried out by microsomal as well as non microsomal enzymes so we'll be talking about the enzymes and the last step ADME study e is the elimination of the drug the drug is excreted out from the body via urine and it can be either with the glomerular filtration or tubular secretion so drug is excreted by the kidneys so let's talk about ADME one by one the first is the absorption absorption is when the drug is absorbed so it is the movement of the drug from the site of administration to the blood absorption depend on the lipid solubility because if a drug is more lipid soluble it can cross the cell membrane we know the cell membrane is made up of lipids it is a bilipid layer so the lipid layer Uh, will lipid will let the lipid molecules pass through so if a lipid soluble molecule it easily crosses the cell membrane so the absorption 
or the crossing of the membrane depend on the lipid solubility absorption is more for a lipid soluble so the drug is absorbed in the non ionized form remember the non ionized form and the lipid solubility if both are present the drug will cross the membrane so it is lipid soluble and one more term which is pka which is ph at which 50% of the drug is soluble which can cross the membrane or rest 50% of the drug is insoluble and it cannot cross the membrane so if the medium is same then it can cross if the medium is same then the drug can cross if you remember this rule for same the drug can cross so if i say if the drug is acidic and the medium is also acidic the solubility is lipid soluble because the same can cross so because of the lipid solubility it is in non ionized form and hence it can cross the membrane if the drug is basic the medium is also basic the lipids it is lipid soluble again it is non ionized because it is non ionized the drug becomes lipid soluble and hence it can cross the membrane so same same crosses the membrane medium if the medium and the drug are same it can cross the membrane say suppose if the drug is acidic and the medium is basic so the drug cannot cross because same same can cross here we have the drug becomes water soluble because it is in the ionized state therefore it cannot cross the membrane if the drug is basic and the medium is acidic then also the drug cannot cross because it is in ionized state it becomes water soluble so same same can cross if the drug and the medium is same it can cross the membrane a highly ionized drug is excreted via the kidneys so acidic drug i already talked about acidic drug get absorbed from the stomach and basic drug get easily absorbed from the intestine so acidic drugs like more aspirin acidic drug like aspirin it can be absorbed easily in the stomach basic drug like morphine now remember the drugs ending with in are basic in nature for example morphine atropine so they are basic in nature and therefore they can be easily absorbed in the intestine now talking about in the adme study second we have is the distribution so distribution is the amount of drug that is going to the tissues that is reaching to the tissues so volume of distribution is calculated by the formula amount given by the iv root divided by plasma concentration now loading dose frequently asked in the question depends on the volume of distribution so volume of distribution is the most important parameter that determine the loading dose of the drug more the volume of distribution more that means more drug is accumulated in the tissues and therefore less drug is left in the plasma so the volume of distribution is an important parameter for the loading dose very important point loading dose depends on the volume of distribution frequently time asked in the question now loading dose is the initial high dose that is given to attain a plasma concentration therefore loading dose can be calculated by volume of distribution into target plasma concentration so volume of distribution is inversely proportional to the plasma protein binding now in this here the proteins are bounded therefore it cannot cross the membrane and therefore we have the lesser volume of distribution that means if it is if the drug is binded to the protein it cannot cross the membrane and therefore the less amount of volume is reaching to the tissues therefore there is less volume of distribution so there is less loading dose so volume of distribution tells about depending on the volume of the distribution so the loading dose is the is directly proportional to the volume of distribution and the volume of distribution is directly proportional to the lipid solubility that means if the drug crosses the cell membrane if it crosses the barrier that means more amount of more volume of drug reaches to the tissues more volume of drug is absorbed by the tissues that means more is the volume of distribution more is the loading dose so talking about the third we have is the metabolism the main purpose or principle of metabolism is to make the drug water soluble so it occurs in two phases phase 1 is the catabolic reaction in which it attaches to the functional group to the drug 
and it will make the drug sticky and later on it can continue with a phase 2 that will make the drug water soluble which is the main principle for metabolism to make the drug water soluble phase 1 we have is the catabolic reaction and phase 2 is the attachment to the molecules like gluconide glutathione acetyl or methyl that is the conjugation reaction so first is catabolic reaction phase 2 is conjugation reaction catabolic reactions like oxidation which is the most common catabolic reaction reduction hydrolysis and cyclization so drug metabolize and it becomes inactive in the phase 1 then phase there is continuation of the phase 2 by attaching to the molecules like gluco glucuronide that is the most commonly drug glutathione acetyl or methyl these they combine to these substances and there is a conjugation reaction now phase 1 and phase 2 reaction can be carried out by enzymes like microsomal enzymes or non microsomal enzymes microsomal enzymes that are present in the endoplasmic reticulum they can be induced or inhibitors so they can be induced or inhibitors non microsomal enzymes cannot be induced or inhibited so the most important microsomal enzyme is the cyp enzyme which is our cytochrome 450 enzyme and important drugs that are metabolized by cyp enzyme you can remember from mnemonic ct scan so ct c we have is the cyclosporine t is tacrolimus s is both of uh, this is a immunosuppressant or anti cancer drug s is the statins then c s ct scan so c is cyclosporin t is tacrolimus s is statins again c we have is cat drug so cat drugs are cesaparide estimazole terfendine terfendine so these cat drugs you can remember that cat is cute this cat drug causes qt prolongation it can lead to arrhythmia which is known as torsidis depointis t d p torsidis depointis and it is treated by magnesium sulfate by the injection magnesium sulfate so cat is cute you can remember that cat drug causes qt prolongation now which are these drugs cat is cesaparide estimazole and terfendine so ct scan sca we have is the amiodarone and is the navi drug so navi drugs are the protease inhibitors of hiv like ritonavir so cat ct scan we have is for cyp 3a4 that is important drug that are metabolized by cyp enzymes now cytochrome 450 is inhibited by ketoconazole and isoniazid so keto ketoconazole which is anti fungal drug and isoniazid which is anti tb drug now cyp 2c19 cyp 2c19 is again a cytochrome uh, is it is again a cytochrome 450 enzyme variant and cyp 2c19 if you write c19 ci cl you can remember and cl is the clopidogrel which is a pro drug and which becomes inactive with the cyp 2c19 so cyp 2c19 activates the clopidogrel if you give cyp in the presence of cyp 2c19 clopidogrel becomes active and if you give omeprazole to these patient who are taking clopidogrel omeprazole stops the metabolism of clopidogrel by inhibiting this cyp 2c19 enzyme and therefore the activation becomes stop so in case of people with cyp 2c19 genetic disorders in which there is low level of cyp 2c19 clopidogrel is not effective so clopidogrel activates the cyp c219 activates the clopidogrel now certain times they have asked which of the following is a pro drug so enalapril which is a ac inhibitor it is a pro drug diazepam is not a pro drug so the fate of metabolism either the active drug become inactive active becomes active or inactive form that is a pro drug becomes active so what are the pro drugs you can remember all prefer doing mds in clinical subjects so all prefer doing mds in clinicals all is ac inhibitors like prils except captopril and lisinopril prefer all prefer p for you can remember ppi proton pump inhibitors like prazoles d for uh, dp dpvferrin m for methyl dopa minoxidil which is given for hair growth or 6mp 
D for levodopa, S for sulfur, sulfasalazine, which is given in burn patients. In I for irinotecan, C clinicals, clopidogrel and carbimazole. So this is all preferred doing MDS in clinicals that are the pro drugs. All is A is AC, AC inhibitors like prills except keptopril, lisinopril. P is PPIs, proton pump inhibitors, prazoles. D is dipivifirin. M is methyl dopa, minoxidil 6 MP. D is again levodopa. S is sulfasalazine, irinotecan and clinical clopidogrel and carbimazole. Now fourth step is excretion of the drug. So drugs are excreted by the kidneys and drug enter the urine via glomerular filtration or tubular secretion. So except one drug which is lithium, it is not excreted by the kidneys. It is excreted by either saliva or sweat. Now normal GFR is 125 ml per minute and in a day if you take it will be 180 liters per day. Glomerular filtration does not depend on the water or the lipid solubility of the drug. But if the drug is binded to the protein, if it is plasma protein binding, it cannot filter through the glomerulus and therefore the plasma protein binding drug reduces the filtration. So reabsorption, if the drug has to reabsorb, then it requires lipid solubility. So therefore, the drug which is inside the tubule, if it is water soluble, it cannot go away. So it will be excreted out. So if we make it water soluble inside the tubules and if we change the medium to the opposite, for example, this is what we do in the poisoning case. So if any acidic drug poisoning patient comes to you and if you make it basic, if you make the medium opposite, you can treat it. For example, for aspirin poisoning. So for aspirin poisoning or any acidic drug poisoning, we can make the urine alkaline by giving sodium bicarbonate and for basic drug poisoning we make the urine acidic so we make the opposite medium by treating or giving the ammonium chloride for the basic drug poisoning so for acidic drug poisoning we make the urine alkaline by sodium bicarbonate for basic drug poisoning we give the urine acidic by ammonium chloride T half is the half life. It is the time at which the plasma concentration of the drug becomes half. That is 50% plasma concentration. And the formula for half life is 0.693 into the volume of distribution divided by clearance. And clearance divided by volume of distribution is constant. So we can say into constant 0.693. Now T half is the half life. Now, it is the time period at which the plasma concentration of the drug becomes half or 50%. Order of kinetics, we have zero order kinetics in which the rate of elimination of the drug is constant. First order kinetics is when the rate of elimination is directly proportional to the plasma concentration. Second order kinetics is when the rate of elimination is directly proportional to the square root of the plasma concentration and third order kinetics is when the rate of elimination is directly proportional to the plasma concentration raised to power 3. So first order kinetics, F for first you can remember and F for fraction. So in the first order kinetics, fraction is constant. However, in zero order kinetics, the amount is constant. So the first order kinetics, F for first and F for fraction, fractions remain constant. The rate of elimination in first order kinetics is directly proportional to the plasma concentration while in the zero order kinetics the rate of elimination is constant which we have already talked about. Now T half which is the half life for first order kinetics is constant as well as the clearance rate is also constant for the first order kinetic. However in the zero order kinetics the half life is directly proportional to the concentration that is the plasma concentration as well as the clearance rate is inversely proportional to the plasma concentration so if you increase the plasma concentration for zero order kinetics drugs the clearance rate will decrease so if you double the dose 
for first order kinetics the plasma concentration will also double and if but if the half life or the clearance however is constant for the first order kinetics so first order kinetics the half life as well as the clearance is constant remember for first order kinetics and the first order kinetics describes that a constant fraction of the drug is excreted in time so for the drugs with first order kinetic time is required to achieve the steady state level that can be predicted from a half life so majority of the drugs they follow the first order kinetics however we have few drugs that follow the zero order kinetics and you can remember from the word mnemonic that is zero watt power so zero watt power zero means zero order kinetic kinetics we are talking w is warfarin a is alcohol or aspirin then t is theophylline t again is tolbutamide and p we have is the phenytoin which is an anti epileptic drug so zero watt power uh, are the drugs that follow the zero order kinetics so the uh, zero order drugs we have is zero is zero order kinetics w is warfarin a is alcohol or aspirin t is theophylline T is again tolbutamide and P for phenytoin. So the order of kinetics depends on the enzyme saturation and if the enzymes are abundant they are going to follow the first order kinetics and remember the majority of the drugs they follow the first order kinetics. But if the enzymes are limiting factor then they follow the zero order kinetics that is a saturation kinetic.